So this is this is Dr. Peregrino Brahma, and straight to the caption: the father of modern evolutionary biology is the man I'm about to introduce to you. His name is Al Jahiz. His full name is Abu Uthman Amr ibn Bahr al Kinani al Basri, because he lived in Basra, which is a modern day Iraq, I believe. Um, he's the unsung hero. He's a scientist, a philosopher, a professor, researcher, scholar, and he lived in the, in the ninth century. Now you can imagine how, how um, elated I was when I just discovered this uh, the last couple of days that the actual father of evolutionary biology is a black man. His nephew wrote of him that his father was uh, an African, that he's a black man and a believer in God, actually, a Muslim, not an atheist or disbeliever, not a Caucasian or white man, not Charles Darwin who discovered, who claimed to have discovered evolutionary concepts in the 19th century. We are talking about a black man, a poor man, very poor, as he wrote of himself, uh, a believer in God who first thoroughly wrote of evolutionary concepts. The same concepts that Darwin later, quote unquote, plagiarized and presented to the world as his own originals. This black man wrote of these things. He lived from, um, he was born 776, he died 868. A thousand years earlier, he wrote these original concepts of evolutionary biology, um, transformation of species, um, he described embryology, evolution, adaptation, the food chain. He wrote extensively of these things in his book, The Book of Animals, and reported that Darwin and his father actually studied, understudied this guy, this black man who was widely read and who produced so many works. He was an Arabic prose, an expert in literature, theology, mutazili theology, political religious polemics, science of evolution, taxonomy, systematics, where you classify organisms. He has a book where he wrote about 350 organisms and classified them in groups and subgroups. Um, let me show you who we are talking about. This is Al Jahiz, um, black Muslim who lived in Basra, modern day Iraq. Now, he, as he wrote of himself, he was a poor guy, but you know he was able to learn things. So all this information is online, and I'll show you how to find this. Or just Google Al Jahiz and study and check him out. So I'm just going to introduce you to the things, the, the things about him that you never knew, so you can find these out yourself. So he was a poor guy, but you know, he was able to study and he was studying. And this was during the Abbasid Caliphate. Uh, this was a period in Basra when there was this um, intellectual and cultural revolution. So the Caliphate was growing big. There was so many libraries, okay? There were libraries, they were, they was, they were investing in knowledge, okay? So this was called, um, this period was called like the Islamic Golden Ages where there was just so much investment in knowledge. They were reading books. They were bringing books from all over the world. And, you know, philosophy was being developed. And all this research was going on. So that was the period when he, came, when he was around. And he developed, primarily developed concepts. Now, uh, he developed these concepts based on a reading of, um, from an Islamic point of view, which is as a believer, not as a disbeliever or atheist, as Darwin later presented it to be. Now, you can imagine how elated I was finding out that it was a black man who actually discovered these things. And this is verifiable, easily verifiable. Now, I was not surprised because I do know that the Europeans have stolen a lot from Africa. You know, Alexander, we know what he did in Egypt. They've stolen from the Middle East and now, you know, published and presented these things as original works, whereas a lot of things were stolen from Africa. We know how Mali was sacked and how the first 
um, library, the first university in the modern world was the Sankore University in Mali. So we know about these things. So um, in Timbuktu, Mali, so it was not a shocker to find that, you know, the works of al jahiz had been stolen. And Darwin is written of as having actually learned from the works and Darwin and his father as having learned from the works of al jahiz And now he presented this whole theory from an atheist point of view, whereas al jahiz was presenting it based on certain instructions, guidelines he got from the Muslim Quran and was presenting evolution as a um, divine law guided process, more like intelligent design that brought about the transformation of species. Um, now, this is one of the places where you can find this information. It's on this website. So any page I open, you'll be able to see the, the URL over here. And this is an article that describes Al Jahiz. And these are the things he did. He, was, he described three mechanisms of evolution. These are the struggle for existence, which are the same concepts that Charles Darwin later put forth. He des described the transformation of species into each other. Al Jahiz described the fact that species contest between species. There was a contest between species and among species, inter intra species, where stronger species were able to fight over food and it was divinely guided according to him and they fight over f food and adaptations and transformations happen to the species so he wrote about the adaptations he wrote that species had the possibility to transform which are the concepts that charles darwin later on presented in the 19th century when he took his the famous uh, beagle visit voyage to the Galap galapagos islands and claimed he just was observing these things okay so um, he described environmental factors in the competition. So Al Jahiz actually did a lot of things. And these are some of the things credited to him in his book, um, the Book of Animals. He mentioned 350 varieties of animals. He classified them. He was a taxonomist, a systematist. These are these are scientists who classify organisms into groups and based on links within them, and also creating this tree of life which also shows them as they you know as they are linked towards this common ancestor and this concept was brought about by al jahiz and not and credit wasn't given to him okay so here we have he discovered and recognized env environmental factors of animal life psychology and degree of intelligence he wrote on animal psychology and sociology he wrote on food chains in fact, this man is the father of modern biology as we know it, and he's an unsung hero. Now, some of the concepts he got, he attributed these things to his study of the Quran, the Muslim holy book. And we can see here in the holy book, surprisingly, which a lot of people don't know. I'm just finding out a lot of these things in the last couple of days. The holy book actually tells the prophet of Islam to travel in the land and see how he, God, originated creation and mark that word originated creation then he brings forth a later creation so these are concepts that he read of and he attributed these whole um, things that he was observing and these and the books he wrote on this on a divinely sired and organized and inspired evolution just the same concepts we have today the only thing is not random not nature, because nature does not exist. You know, they say mother nature. There's nothing like that. So he's defining evolution based on, it's a, it's a word. He chose mother instead of father nature because they knew if they said father nature, everybody's going to recognize and think, is it God they are talking about? So they say mother nature, natural disaster, nature did this, nature did that. But he's writing it from the aspect that God ordains those patterns and gives food and makes one species food for the next species and allows the struggle for existence based on their ego and the winner survives and the other goes away. So this is Al Jahiz. You need to research, look into the, the works he did. It's fascinating to see that it's a black man and a believer in God um, who derived these theories. So you have here where um, Dr. T.O. Shanavas, he wrote in his book and said Charles Darwin and his grandfather Erasmus Darwin were influenced by the works of Muslim scientists before. And, he, and, and um, the book that he wrote, let me look for it here. It is, um, this is his book, Islamic Theory of Evolution, The Missing Link. 
And you can buy these books. You can look for them in libraries or buy them. And the reason why they put Charles Darwin with one eye patched is not to show, um, not to make him like he was halfway blind. But what, what, they, what, they, what they did with that is trying to indicate how they are covering up. They're only seeing one half of it. And they are covering up. This, is, um, this, web, this website shows a review by Edip Yuxel of the book. And it says the book was previously um, published under the title Evolution and or Creation and Islamic Perspective. We decided to publish it with this chap um, caption. And the cover picture is not meant to disparage or vilify Darwin, but it is meant to describe the common attitude among the proponents of the theory of evolution as they ignore the important contribution of Muslim scientists and they abuse the theory by associating it with unwarranted philosophical conclusions such as atheism. So that's why um, Shana, Shanavas, you know, put that patch over Darwin's eye. This is the lie. Uh, this, you know, it's, it's fascinating. You just have to get into this. Now, there's this other article here on this website. Let's move this right here. Which um, is um, describing evolutionary theories. And we have the things that basically Al-Jahiz was inspired to do his research based on the instructions and guidelines that he read in the holy book, in the Muslim holy book. And it's fascinating to think these are stuff that are coming from a religious perspective and not from an atheist perspective. So here's one of the verses in the Muslim holy book. It says, um, Allah has created every living thing from water. And of them are those that move on their bellies. These are the reptiles. And then those that walk on two legs and those that walk on four legs. So these are concepts that are the present understanding of evolution and origin from water, stuff like that. So here it says travel to land and see the creation and stuff. So these are things that um, al Jahiz based his studies on. This is another one here on this website, Against Science. And this is the Big Bang Theory, which you first see and you believe is a modern concept. And you see the universe, this is the standard definition. The universe de um, began billions of years ago as a tiny dot and exploded into today's huge system of stars and planets. And in the Quran, you see the Muslim holy book, you see heavens and earth were fused as one unit of creation. And these I color coded the same color so you can see how it's the same definition that is put forth again by science um, 1400 years later. Before we clove them asunder, here you have exploded, clove them asunder, a tiny dot, a single unit, um, and so on. So you have these things. Now, you have Charles Darwin. And who is Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin is a racist. Now, everybody knows that. His theories were trying to claim that blacks originated separately, and he got it wrong. That's called the multi-origin hypothesis, that blacks originated separately, whites originated separately, you know. And that's why, based on his theories, after he, quote-unquote, plagiarized al-Jahiz, racism was, you know, um, fueled, and they locked up this poor guy, Otabenga. They locked him up in a, in a zoo, Bronx Zoo, in, in, in New York, America. They locked up Otta Benga in Bronx Zoo, right? That was the, that was the thinking. That was his, uh, his, his concepts. And this was just barely 100 years ago. So here we have, um, I put a slide that showed some of the things that contributed to his thoughts actually from a religious book, so you see that the concept of evolution actually arises from a religious perspective and not from an atheist point of view as um, Charles Darwin made it appear. So here you have the things that we believe inspired um, Al-Jahiz's thoughts. You have verses in the Quran. We've read this one. We've talked about this one. This one, Quran 31, 21, 30 says, have not those who disbelieve, this is being addressed to the disbelievers, the atheists, known that the heavens and earth were connected as one unit. So that's the verse we talked about, the Big Bang verse, and it's written directed at the disbelievers that it was one unit before we clove it asunder, and we made every living thing out of water. From water came everything. Will they not believe? It's specifically talking to them. It's so, it's so fascinating when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I discover these things. And this is another one, Quran 6 verse 2 says, he who has created you from clay, and then he spent some a term of time away from you, and its specific term he determined. Now this is you know evolutionary concepts. He makes creations, and then it takes time. 
Um, this is another one, Grant 71, 17. Another has caused you to grow from the earth a progressive growth. Some other places written in stages. He designed you and made your design better. These are all Quranic verses. Now, a lot of people don't know this. He originates creation, then reproduces it. For him, it's most easy. And so on and so forth. Forth. So you can find these links. I'll try to put them up on the video. Please comment. Let's engage in this debate. I'm just providing you with the brief. Uh, these are pictures from, I believe, from Al Jahiz's book of animals. He did great work. The whole work is complete. The whole evolutionary work was done. This guy did the whole work. Um, let's have a conversation on this. Uh, this is Dr. Peregrino Brahma. Thanks for listening and watching.